Welcome to this mini edition of Forever Wild, where we're going to be talking about the venomous snakes of South Carolina. Note we said venomous and not poisonous. Venomous means anything that injects poison into a body without it wanting to be injected, so those snakes will qualify. Poisonous would mean anything on the outside of your body placed on it or accidentally drunk it, such as Clorox or something maybe like poison ivy in the woods which you rub up against it and it causes a poisonous allergic reaction. So these are venomous creatures. We're going to be go over, going over this with one of our friends here at the center. And this, her, her name is Sarah Allen. And Sarah, would you please tell us where you're from and what you're doing here? I'm from the Academy of Technology and Academics, and I'm an intern here at Playcard. Okay. You're doing a really good job. We, have you appreciated your internship here? I have. Definitely. Been very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. Hands on. Well, thank you very much. Well, as we're going from left to right here, or there right to left on the camera, we're going to be speaking about each species here. Now, if you will please grab the snake there right in front of you and hold it up to the camera, kind of show them what the camera looks like. What kind of snake is that? A copperhead. So that's a copperhead snake. How do you know that's a copperhead? From the saddlebags on its back. Saddlebag. What's special about a saddlebag? The fat, skinny, fat part on the side of the Side of snakes. So it's similar to big saddlebags on the side of a Pony Express rider. So that's very interesting. Are they a really camouflage snake in the woods or are they easily seen? They're very camouflaged. Very camouflaged. Do most of the bite victims come from a copperhead or say one of these other species in South Carolina? Copperhead. So most of them are from a copperhead. The majority of snake bites are from this snake. Now what's special about its tail? Is it a dark color or light color? A dark color. And does that mean he's an adult or a baby? Adult. Okay, now when they are a baby, they can be bright yellow, like the bright yellow tip um, on, say, a fishing lure, or they can be bright green. Okay, and they use those little lure-type tails when they're babies to attract insects, and they shake them, when the insect comes up, pow, they strike, and they eat the insects. So it's like an insect fishing lure. Let's look at that snake in the jar right there. What kind of snake is that? Same thing, copperhead. It's a copperhead. What is the, the material he's sitting in? It's similar to what people would drink if they were going to go to a party or something like that if they're an adult. Alcohol. Alcohol. It's ethyl alcohol. Okay, the, those of you country folks in the audience, this will be moonshine. Okay, they take really high proof alcohol and they put it in there and it preserves the snake body. Really cool. I'm gonna put him over there. Okay, so that's an actual once live copperhead. All right, as we're moving from right to left here, what are you gonna see? A cottonmouth water moccasin. Okay, a cottonmouth water moccasin. Now, what's special about the cottonmouth? Its mouth looks like cotton. Okay. His mouth looks like cotton. Now, what color is cotton in the field? White. Bright white, just like the pretty pearly smiles you see on people. Now, he'll smile at you, but he'll open that mouth just like this. And if you continue to get closer to him, you bet you what he's doing with that smile, that doesn't mean he's happy with you. He means, this is my territory, and leave me alone. If you continue to walk toward him, he's going to flatten that head out, and then he's going to basically like setting a, a, a closed-door mousetrap. He will pop you just like that as a reflex to get you away from him. He will hit you multiple times, sometimes as many as two or three times before you get away from him. He is the most defensive snake in South Carolina. So that is the cottonmouth water moccasin. He defends a territory about a six foot circle in diameter. And anywhere in that circle he will react to you by his body actions. Is that, that's how you know that snake. All right, does a cottonmouth have a slitted pupil like a cat eye or does he have a round pupil? He is a pit viper, so what do you think? Slitted. He is a slitted like a cat eye. And all the pit vipers here, you will see that. That's an indicator in the field. Okay, as we're moving from right to left here, what do you see? What snake is this? This is the one that's named after the river cane. Okay, so it's the cane break rattlesnake. Say cane break rattlesnake. Cane break rattlesnake. Okay, that means river cane. If you're walking through a patch of woods and you see this little small bamboo looking stuff in a ditch, that would be the habitat for this snake. He likes lowlands. He likes wetlands. He likes anywhere that you're going to, you know, uh, have, a, have a chance of getting a wet foot. That's their habitat. Okay, they like wetlands. This is a very common snake in Horry County. It's very common in the lowlands of South Carolina. In the upstate, up, uh, from the midlands around Columbia uh, westward, you will see all the way to the mountains, you'll see another type of snake similar to this. It's called a timber rattlesnake. But in our area of South Carolina, this is called the cane break rattlesnake. Now, what's the distinguishing characteristic? See the pattern on the back? What does that kind of letter remind you of? V. The letter V. Okay, so that's called a chevron. A thick letter V is a chevron. If you see chevrons and these things here, what are these called? Beads. They're, they're called beads or buttons. Okay, buttons. And when you shake them, they have little bones in them that shake back and forth. 
that's what warns you normally when you come near. Now do all rattlesnakes rattle? Yes or no? Yes. No, they do not rattle. All snakes that are rattlesnakes, half of them may not rattle when you come up because they've learned from humans being around them that they need to be quiet or else they're liable to get killed. They're, they're actually naturally selecting to acquire a rattlesnake over time. It's kind of an interesting thought about rattlesnakes. Okay, when we come down the line here, we're going to get another little snake. What is this one called? Okay. What do you think? It's got the squares on it. Okay, it's named after something small. It starts with a P. Yeah. It's a pygmy rattlesnake, okay? Pygmy rattlesnakes have squares on their back, okay, all the way around. And they're very indicative of rattlesnakes. They have those small buttons, and each time they shed, they get a new button. But over time, the old button falls off. So it gives you a rough amount of time that they've shedded. If they average, say, two sheddings a year, you kind of get a general estimation of the minimum age of a snake doing that. It's kind of neat. If you look here, what are these things called here in the front? They're fangs. Fangs. Now, are, do fangs hook backwards, or do they go forwards? Backwards. They hook backwards, and they fold up. So that's why it's called a viper. The name viper means folding fangs. Okay, so that's what that is. That's pretty cool. He's a pit viper because he can sense heat in his nose there. All right, as we're coming down here, what about this big monster? What is this? This is a diamondback rattlesnake. What kind? The eastern or western? Eastern. This is the eastern diamondback rattlesnake. Exactly right. And how many buttons are on the tail of this snake right here, just for our purpose? What do you think? Just give me an estimate. Ten. Yeah, ten buttons. So that would be at least five years old, right? A, a, a quick estimate of age. When you shake the tail, that's what they'll sound like when you come up. They'll sound a lot like a buzzing insect, kind of a heavy buzzing noise. Now, if you look at the mouth here, look at that little hole in the tongue. Do you know what that hole's used for? Eating. Yep. When he eats, he extends that hole out like a snorkel. He's got a long, extendable uh, mouth part here that extends out, and he breathes while he's eating a rat. He will take each jaw, he, side of his jaw, and he'll pull in the rat when he's eating it. Very good. These guys can eat uh, rabbits. They get so big. They can also eat squirrels. They get almost eight feet long. In South Carolina, they've been found uh, well over six to seven feet long. So they're very big snakes. Okay. We come down here. We've got a special snake here. And we've only got the head of him here, so we're going to use a kind of an artificial snake to show him in a minute. What is special about this bright colored head right here? What is this snake? A coral snake. A coral snake. Let's use the example. It's a little bigger so people can see it in the audience. All right. This is... 100 times bigger than an actual coral snake would be. Most coral snakes would be about that long. It's about as big as they get. But we're going to use him as an example. If you look here, what's special about his, his uh, markings? What are you, what's the saying for that? Red touch yellow kills a fellow. Okay, red touch yellow kills a fellow. Okay, when it bites somebody, is it pretty much deadly most of the time? Yes, this snake is a hundred times more venomous than the copperhead. This is the most venomous snake in South Carolina, and you need to avoid it. Now, do, do usually small children get bitten or adults? What do you think? Adults? That's not true. Small children normally get bitten because they think they're ne bracelets or necklaces. They think they're beautiful and they want to play with them. So any bright-colored snake in their yard, make sure you tell them not to play with it. Kids are curious by nature, so make sure that they know to leave them alone, give them a wide berth. All right, if you look right here, this is called something special. What kind of snake is this? Scarlet snake. Okay, the scarlet king snake. The reason why it has a special saying, and it's similar to that coral snake, but a little bit different. What is this saying for it? Red touch black, you're all right, Jack. Red touch black, you're all right, Jack. Does he have a red nose or black nose? A red. So the red nose of life. Whereas the coral snake would have the black nose of death, it says the red nose of life. Is this venomous or non-venomous? This is non-venomous, okay? This has got a round pupil in him, and so does a coral snake. They both have round pupils. They're the only snakes in South Carolina, the coral snakes, that break the slitted pupil rule of venomous snakes. They're the only ones that have uh, you know, round pupils that are venomous. They're in the family Elaphidae, and these are in the family Echistrodonidae, which means pit viper, okay? So it's pretty neat. All right. As we're coming around here, uh, we've done a little bit about snakes all the way around. So we really appreciate your knowledge and your insight. It shows you've learned a lot during your internship and you're continuing your learning process. What year are you in school? I'm a senior. You're a senior in high school, right? Okay. Would you come out and do this internship again if you had to? Oh, yeah. Well, all right. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right. Way to be a guest.